Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to discuss oxidation involving carbon-carbon bond uh, with special reference to the lead tetraacetate and then chromium trioxide and ozonolysis. First, see lead tetraacetate. We will discuss the lead tetraacetate. The molecular formula of lead tetraacetate is PbOAc by 4. Ac stands for acetyl group C double bond O CH3, Pb O C double bond O CH3 by 4. Ac it is the abbreviation of acetyl group. Okay. Oxidative cleavage means oxidation of hexenal diol along with the cleavage of carbon carbon bond. For example, here it is a vicinal diol. Vicinal diol on oxidative cleavage, this CH2OH group will oxidize to aldehyde that is formaldehyde and this CHOH group means this part will oxidize to corresponding aldehyde that is acetaldehyde. Here carbon-carbon bond cleavage takes place this carbon-carbon, this CH2OH is oxidized to formaldehyde and this part is oxidized to acetaldehyde. The function of lead tetraacetate is same as that of periodic acid. Here again the same function is there. This is a vicinal diol. This carbon-carbon bond cleavage takes place. This part, upper part will oxidize to corresponding ketone that is acetone and the lower part will oxidize to corresponding aldehyde that is acetaldehyde. Here it is again vicinal diol carbon-carbon bond cleavage, this part will oxidize to ketone that is acetone, this part will also oxidize to ketone that is acetone. So in this way we will get here two molecules of acetone. Okay. See here in these examples, here how many oxidative means the functional group which are susceptible for oxidation are present, one aldehyde group and these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 OH groups. So, 6 functional groups are there and here this oxidative cleavage 1, this is another oxidative cleavage, this is third oxidative cleavage, this is the fourth oxidative cleavage and it is the fifth oxidative cleavage. So, 5 carbon-carbon bond cleavage takes place along with the oxidation of functional group to OH functional, OH functional group to corresponding aldehyde or ketone as well as the aldehydic group will oxidize to corresponding, uh, uh, corresponding acid. See here this aldehyde is oxidized to acid that is formic acid as well as this 1, 2, 3, 4 this OH group will also oxidize to first aldehyde and then aldehyde will oxidize to acid. So here in this way we get 5 molecules of formic acid. However, this primary alcohol, this one CH2OH will oxidize to formaldehyde. Now see the another case. Here it is the example of fructose. It is the example of glucose. Now here in this example of fructose, one keto group is there and the keto group on oxidation get converted to carbon dioxide. These two primary alcoholic group, this one CH2H and this is the, this is another CH2H group, both will oxidize to corresponding aldehyde, that is formaldehyde. However, the remaining CH2H group, 1, 2, 3, this will oxidize to corresponding carboxylic acid, that is formic acid. So here in this way, we get three molecules of formic acid, two molecules of formaldehyde and this C double bond O will oxidize to carbon dioxide. Now it is interesting to see the mechanism of uh, cleavage of carbon-carbon bond in case of diol. This is our diol, two H groups are there attached to the adjacent carbon that is vicinal diol. This is PbOAc by 4 that is lead tetraacetate. Okay, in the first step see what happens, it is a SN2 type attack where this oxygen it acts as a nucleophile 
and attack from the backside of this acetoxyl group. So, this formation of oxygen PB blade bond and the cleavage of this PB oxygen bond takes place simultaneously. It is a living group. This bond is formed. As oxygen donates its lone pair, what will be the charge on oxygen? Positive charge that is oxonium ion formation takes place. Okay. Now, oxonium ion is formed and after that deprotonation takes place because uh, after donation of lone pair, oxygen is electron deficient. So, immediately in the next step, uh, it will donate its proton. Now, that proton that is H positive ion and this acetoxyl ion combines together to give acetic acid that is ACOH. AC stands for acetyl group, it is the byproduct ACOH. Okay. What is the oxidation state of PB here? 4, plus 4 because it forms 4 bonds. Okay. Now, this bond is formed, deprotonation, oxygen PB bond, we get this. Again, the another oxygen donates the lone pair to the PB lead. It is again SN2 type attack. This bond formation takes place. When this new bond is formed between oxygen and PB, at the same time this acetoxyl group leaves the moiety. So, this cleavage takes place, this formation. And uh, oxonium ion will form, then deprotonation. Now, this proton and this acetoxyl ion, there is a loss of ACOH that is acetic acid and this oxygen PB bond formation takes place. We get this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 membered ring intermediate having 2 oxygen atoms and 1 PB that is 1 lead atom. Okay. After that, the rearrangement takes place because this moiety is uh, unstable where this bonded pair of electrons are shifted here, these are shifted on PB and this bond is shifted here. So, as a result, this carbon-carbon bond cleavage takes place, this new bond formation carbon and between carbon and oxygen takes place that is carbonyl group. So, we get this ketone. Similarly, this carbon-oxygen double bond formation, we get this aldehyde. Depends upon the substituent. If uh, both are alkyl group, then we will get ketone. If both are hydrogen, then we will get uh, aldehyde or if one is alkyl and one is hydrogen, then again we get the aldehyde. In this way, we get uh, the oxidative cleavage product. The function is same as that of HiO4 that is per iodic acid. Okay, and this is the byproduct that is PbOAC by 2. Please uh, remember here by 2 is there. What is the oxidation state of Pb in the byproduct? 2. It forms 2 bonds. Okay. So, this is all about the late tetraacetate. Now, the second uh, reagent is uh, oxidation of uh, ketone uh, with chromium trioxide. Specially here emphasis is given on the oxidative cleavage of ketone, cyclic ketone. Uh, this is cyclohexanone on oxidation with chromium trioxide. This carbon-carbon bond cleavage means the carbon, carbonyl carbon and this alpha carbon bond cleavage takes place. This is oxidized to COOH group. This carbon is also oxidized to COOH group. In this way, ring opening reaction takes place and we get the dicarboxylic acid. Same is the case here. This carbonyl carbon and alpha carbon bond cleavage, this will oxidize to COOH. This is also oxidized to COOH and we get dicarboxylic acid. Same is the case here, but uh, here selectivity is important. That is a ring opening reaction takes place from which side, whether from this side or this side. So, remember the ring opening takes place from the less substituted side. So, this is alpha carbon, this is also alpha carbon, but oxidative cleavage not takes place from this side, it takes place from this side. It is oxidized to COOH, this is, uh, alpha carbon is also oxidized to COOH and we get the dicarboxylic acid. Means simply the carbon-carbon bond cleavage takes place between the carbonyl carbon and alpha carbon and we, here we get the dicarboxylic acid, that is all. Okay. Now, see the mechanism uh, uh, that how the chromium trioxide functions for the oxidation of uh, cyclic ketone into dicarboxylic acid. See this is uh, this reaction takes place in presence of uh, acid, it is acid catalyzed reaction. So, source of uh, acid may be any mineral acid like HCl, H2SO4 or nitric acid and this in the first step protonation of this oxygen takes place there is a formation of oxonium ion takes place. But before that, uh, you have to write the enol form of this. Uh, this is a keto form. Its enol form is this. 
where you have to shift this pi bond here and uh, this proton is transferred to here, so OH. Actually, uh, you can uh, write in this way or you can write OH here and double bond here, one and same thing. So, keto enol tautomerism. Okay, and this is acid catalyzed reaction. At this acid, in presence of acid, this keto enol tautomerism takes place. Okay, this is our reagent, it is a chromic acid. Chromium trioxide and water gives a chromic acid. It is the structure of chromic acid where chromium is in the center. It is doubly bonded attached to two oxygen atom and uh, two OH groups. Okay, this is chromic acid. In the first step, see what happens. Now oxygen donates its lone pair here. So pi bond is formation, pi bond formation takes place. When this new bond is formed, at this time pi bond is open here and this negative charge I can say and uh, this bond formation takes place. Okay. Now see as uh, this new bond is formed, pi bond is written here, oxygen donates lone pair, so positive charge, this pi bond is open here, so now there is a single bond only, carbon oxygen bond formation, carbon oxygen bond formation. When this new bond is formed, at the same time this pi bonded electrons are open on this oxygen, so oxygen bears negative charge and this formation of new bond and opening of this pi bonded electron takes place simultaneously and we get this moiety. Now it is uh, unstable. Why it is unstable? Because uh, one positive charge containing oxygen is there, one negative charge uh, containing oxygen is there. So it is unstable. Immediately what happens? There is a loss of proton. Oxygen gain its lone pair, deprotonation takes place and we get this step, uh, ketone, C double bond O. Okay. But till it is not stable. Now see what happens. This water molecule which is the solvent, it acts as a source of a nucleophile. This oxygen donates its lone pair to the carbonyl carbon. This bond is formed between oxygen and carbon and when this new bond is formed at the same time pi bonded electrons are open on the oxygen. So this formation of carbon oxygen bond and opening of pi bonded electron on oxygen takes place simultaneously. What is the charge on oxygen after donation of lone pair? Positive charge that is deficiency and pi bond is open on oxygen, so oxygen have the negative charge. Okay, so this oxygen carbon bond, oxonium ion formation. Immediately what will happen? Deprotonation takes place and in this way that oxygen gain its lone pair and um, we get OH, we get this moiety. No doubt it is very unstable because, uh, why it is unstable? Because this is oxide ion, this is again oxide ion, two oxygen are the negatively charged. Now rearrangement takes place. See this rearrangement, this negative charge means these two electrons are used, utilized here in the pi bond formation, new bond is formed and when this new bond is formed at the same time this bond carbon carbon bond cleavage takes place and this pi bond will shift here. So this formation of new bond carbon oxygen double bond and the formation of this carbon oxygen bond takes place simultaneously. And when this new bond is formed between oxygen and carbon, at the same time this bond cleavage takes place and this moiety chromium ion uh, will uh, removed as a byproduct. Okay, so see it is a C double bond OH that is aldehyde and this is C double bond O OH that is acid. Okay. Now this aldehydic functional group is further susceptible for oxidation, you know, and aldehyde on oxidation, over oxidation get converted to acid. In this way we get the dicarboxylic acid, so cyclohexanone is converted into dicarboxylic acid. Here simply this carbon-carbon bond cleavage takes place and both this carbon that is carbonyl carbon and alpha carbon oxidize to COOH group. This is the uh, oxidation of uh, oxidation of cyclic ketone with chromium trioxide. Okay, so this is uh, all about uh, these two reagents. Uh, so far we have discussed one is uh, PBOAC bar, uh, PBOAC by 4 that is lead tetraacetate and uh, another is uh, chromium trioxide and co in chromium trioxide especially we have discussed the oxidation of cyclic ketone to dicarboxylic acid only.